Sasha Martinengo. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time on balls.co.za. It's the Calling on Gears, Balls Visual Radio, wherever you will go. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome to uh, Gears with me, Sasha Martin. And if you've been listening for the last couple of weeks or maybe the month or so, you would have uh, noticed that um, the Gears people are much more techno-savvy than those on the Balls Visual Radio show. Because, you know, I've got Steve Smith live uh, via Skype all the way in Cape Town, and he changed servers especially just to be on the show. Hey, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you, Sasha? Editor and Commander-in-Chief of uh, the Red Bulletin. You used to be with uh, Sports Illustrated a couple of years ago. Yeah, I left there about three years ago and started the Bulletin here um, beginning of 2010. And I believe it's going exceptionally well that it may, it may even go onto the shelves or something like that. What, have I heard correctly or am I out of, uh, out of touch? No, we, we, we're a free giveaway, so we partner up with the independent group newspapers. So if you subscribe to the Star or the, uh, the Weekend August down in Cape Town or the Independent on Saturday, then you'll get it free with your with the newspaper every month. So we're looking at around 70,000 copies a month. And also if you buy stuff at um, the sports scene stores nationwide, then you'll get a free copy too. Oh, that's terrific. You know, the, uh, on Tuesday, I uh, had a chat with your counterpart in the UK, Anthony Rowlandson. Oh, right. Anthony, oh, he's a cool guy. He's a great, great guy. I actually met up with him yeah. in London on the Monday and the Tuesday we had a chat. So, and he was asking me all about you. So, he's, uh, he's a good fan of yours. <laughs> yeah, Anthony and I get on well. Actually, I think I had my first ever interview with, with uh, Red Bull was with uh, a phone call with Anthony. He, he's a big Formula One fan, as you know. He's, yeah. I think he's written it. He writes most of our Formula One stuff. So, I mean, he, that guy's met everybody. He yeah, I know. A legend, I think. It's actually, it's yeah. quite, quite sickening when you sit there and you meet the guy and he's, yeah, well, you know, and then I, when I spoke yeah. to Kimmy and then with Michael and I'm going, what? <laughs> Not so cool. <laughs> Not so cool. Well, when, when I joined the Bulletin, I was thinking, okay, finally I'm going to get to do some Formula One stuff and I'll get to meet some guys. But I think Anthony's got that sewn up. Eh? I don't get a look in. <laughs> well, you know, what? I'll try and swing it a little bit from my side for you there, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, man. And, and if I manage to do that, just remember who your mates are, hey? <laughs> yeah, well, maybe we can both go. That's exactly yeah. what I'm implying. You yeah. never know. I think we should yeah. all go and meet uh, meet Mr. Matsushits and all the crew. So, what? listen, yeah. before I talk about Neisner, because I know you were there yesterday, I want to I wanted to know yeah. what you're sort of focusing on in the Red Bulletin at the moment. Is there anything really, really exciting? Because I know you, uh, you, Red Bull are quite big sponsors of uh, a lot of South African athletes now. Yeah, look, we, we, we've got the Olympics coming up and there's, there's a couple of our athletes who are going to be there. Um, guys we, we closely associated with, Safisa Nslapo, who's our BMX guy, and we're hoping that um, Safisa can um, you know, get a medal this year. I mean, he's one of the real contenders. And also Kotsa Mokwena, the long jumper. Yeah. Um, we have an association with him. Um, so there's an article about him in the latest issue. So, yeah, I mean, really holding thumbs for Kotsa. And I chatted to him a couple of weeks ago. and. I mean, the guy looks unbelievably confident. And I know Kotso, he doesn't generally give the game away, but, I, but he and his coach, are, 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 you know, they have a really good feeling about this event. So, you know, I, I think he's our best chance for a medal. So you can read about him in our new issue. Oh, that's brilliant, man. I'm uh, excited to hear that as well. Actually, I saw Sefiso the other night. It was great to have a little chat with yeah. him and uh, uh, wearing his Red Bull cap very proudly, just to let you know. So he's, uh, <laughs> he's doing the good. brand good. He's doing the brand good as well. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. cool. Is that for you? You can take it. It's okay. No, 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 no. no Are you no. sure? You know, I'd, I'd hate to interrupt yeah. you. I mean, Sorry. listen, it's Friday morning. I mean, I'm surprised you guys are even awake. Listen, I, I was up early this morning. I had to catch a flight back from Nisner. So uh, I was up at 6. Jeez. Looking at the rain, thinking, shit, what are these guys going to get up to? Oh. I mean, I hope the weather's help, you know. Because la last year it also was wet. I know. So uh, you, it's going to be a, a tough, tough, bit, a tough race, I think. Yeah, or that's for sure. Time. So, I mean, listen, you were there uh, for the last couple of days with Renault, because um, Renault are the major yeah. sponsors of uh, the Nisner uh, Speed Festival. They are, yeah. We, we were there for the launch of the uh, Renault Megane uh, Sport Trophy, which is the, oh. like the, the, the most powerful version and limited edition version of the Megane RS. Um, just driving it around, a couple, doing some bit of a Gymkhana stuff and um, doing speed tests along the Plettenberg Bay High um, Airway, Airstrip. <laughs> oh, the Airstrip. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. that must have been good fun. It must be a very cool car. 
It's a hell of a car. I mean, how, you know, how those, those guys, I think it's 265 brake horsepower they've got through the, the, the RS Trophy. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's, there's some black magic going on with the, with the limited slip diff they've got to handle all that, all that power through the front wheel. And I mean, the car, they're giving us some stats. I think this is the fastest, this car holds the fastest lap at Nürburgring um, for front wheel drive cars. I mean, is it's beaten everything so? from Golf R to... Jeez, I mean, you name it, the Ford Focus RS, this is the quickest, by quite a way, actually. Wow, that's very impressive. I must get hold yeah, of, uh, yeah. must get hold of um, Renault. Anyway, so you were down I think there. You should give them a call. I, I think I should, you know, and we'll, you listen, they supply yeah. the Red Bull team as well, Steve. You know, if we go in there together, two heads better than yeah. one, you never know what could happen, eh? <laughs> I like what you think. Yeah. So listen, nice the hill climb. Um, I mean, I know last year it was the, the Nissan GTR that uh, one when you were there did you see any of the sort of cars that are going to be taking taking part yeah i saw i saw um i saw a couple of them lined up when um, we stayed at samola so i think there were a couple of the guys staying there i saw the mclaren oh okay i mean that yeah i've seen that mp4 i mean in the flesh is just staggering so look i, I think this given the weather and it's probably going to be at best damp mm -hmm. um at worst raining, I think those GTRs are going to be tough to beat again. Yeah, four-wheel um, drive, yeah, everything. I think, I think, I think it's, yeah, I think the smart money's on them. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, Willem is back to uh, defend his title, and Jackie Schechter's there this year as well. So, ah. you know, I think, I think those, that's, I think those are the guys you probably would need to look at. Um, it's quite a, it's quite phenomenal, Steve, how this event has grown over the years, and uh, I mean, it's turned into. A really world-class, well-supported um, hill climb, and it's most probably the one of the very few that we have in in South Africa, legal ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but legally. I mean, I, I think there, there is a history of hill climb in South Africa through the years. Mm. Um, you know, chatting to, you know, right when I interviewed Sorrel for the book we did. I mean, he, he chatted about those quite a lot, and I think he did a few of them. But so there, yeah. there is a tradition of hill climb in South Africa, but. It's kind of died away, you know. It's, it's one of those, you know, motorsports such an expensive venture these days um, that there isn't really room for many forces. So it's really cool to see something like this coming back because it's really about the roots of motorsport, you know. I mean, I think hill climb is probably one of the first events that were ever held um, when cars were, when cars became races. Sure. So, I love it. I mean, it's one of my favorite events. It is quite amazing because it really is precision driving at its best. I mean, you've got one yeah. sort of chance at it yeah. and, you know, you have one sort of sighter and then the next minute, thank you, you've got to come back and uh, do it as best you can. No, I know there's a, there are a couple of my uh, motoring journalist colleagues who are going to be racing. Um, oh, goodness. RS oh, trophy my. Up the, up the course. Yeah, it's uh, Calvin Fisher from Top Car oh. and Jesse Adams from <laughs> oh no, Jesse! I was and just going to say, uh, please don't Jesse. tell me it's Jesse. <laughs> no, well, listen. I mean, Je Jesse's a hell of a driver. No, you can pedal. Probably one of, the, uh, of all the motoring journalists. I'd probably put my money on him. Yeah, no, um, you can pedal. Experience. I mean, yeah. And Scott Hayes from SA Car Fan Blog. Okay. And there's one other guy. Uh, oh, Gary. Gary from German. Gary McKay. Yeah. Oh, brilliant! So we'll see okay. how they do. Yeah. Listen, I mean, we're all looking forward to the results, and I'm sure there's going to be TV crews around there as well. Uh, the last thing I want to talk yeah. to you about is um, I've read sure. it. I've read most of it. Um, I'm about yeah, mm. about two thirds of the way through. I think it's hysterically funny, as well as um, a very uh, and very very entertaining. And that is the the book you've uh, written, biography, I suppose, on uh, Sorrel Fundamava. Congratulations. Yeah. Geez. Thanks, Sasha. Yeah, it was it was like one of those bucket list things for me. I mean, to yeah. sit down with like a hero of mine and and spend like the best part of two months, um, or, you know, probably three times a week, I'd arrive at his at his place in Paul. He's got a sort of a little farm there, and and he'd hand me some coffee, and for two hours we'd sit down and talk about his life. So I quickly forgot I was writing a book. It was just like one. I didn't even care that I was going to write a book. It was just a fantastic experience to hear him talk about. You know, and he's got a sense of humor, man. He tells a fantastic story. So it was, it was really one of those highlights of my career, actually, to sit and listen. Well, I'm a, I'm a, I must actually get to write a book. Yeah. I must say, I mean, from when I started, I just, I just couldn't stop uh, turning the pages. So well written, and also I think the way that he tells a story, I suppose, must have been uh, uh, quite uh, refreshing for you to be able to sit there and say, hey, listen, I could basically just take word for word there. It's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's a question of stitching stuff together because over two months, we, you know, the, the interviews go in many different directions. But the guy's a gifted storyteller. And I mean, you know, you're talking about a guy who's done 400 kilometers down the, the, the main straight in Milan. So, exactly. 
and, and, and gone sideways in a, in a Audi Quattro rally car through the forests of, of PE. So, you know, it's a hell of a talented driver. And, and it's been quite naughty too, as you would have read. Well, I mean, that's, I think the honesty, the, the true brash honesty of the book is just wonderful and refreshing to, to hear as well. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to definitely uh, mail you because I, I want to get him on the show and have a long chat to him yeah. about uh, the book and his experiences because, uh, I mean, he is. He's South Africa's uh, greatest legend right up there with Jody Schechter. Yeah, he's kind of straight talking. He's like, the, I mean, I like to call him the Clint Eastwood of South African motorsport. Um, he's got those kind of gunslinger eyes that uh, stare anybody down who even tries to pass him. So, yeah, he's a hell of a character. But I'll, I'll set it up. Yeah, just let me know. That would be terrific. Steve, it's great to, to catch up with you. Uh, I'm sure we'll chat again in the near future. Keep on doing what you're uh, doing. Great job with the Red Bulletin. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up soon. Cool, Sasha. Good to talk. Thanks, Thanks, my friend. Take care. There we go. Steve Smith from uh, the Red Bulletin, live here on Gears, Balls Visual Radio, down in Cape Town, giving us an insight into the Red Bulletin. Also, the author of uh, Cyril van der Merwe's uh, biography, do yourself a favor, um, give it a listen. It is hysterically funny, but also very, very factually uh, correct and uh, amazing what uh, Cyril van der Merwe has achieved in his uh, racing career. It's definitely... <laughs> Gears on bulls.co.za with Sasha Martinengo. He's kept himself out of trouble. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time.